Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy before God also who gave us this precious uh, time to share the heart of God, which is flowing in the Bible. Uh, today, let us open the Bible. Uh, today, let us open the Bible because we are going to study 1 King chapter 18. 1 King chapter 18. Mm. Verse 21-22. 1 King chapter 18, verse 21-22. And Elijah came to all people and said, How long will you fettle between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, alone, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, the Baal prophet of 450 men. And verse 37 to 39, 37 to 39, 37 to 39. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this prophet may know that you are the Lord God, and you have turned their heart back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and wood and the stone and the dust, and it licked up the word that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and they said, The Lord, He is God, the Lord is God. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm very happy before God really to give us this precious time because every day uh, in the morning, uh, I'm very happy to share the heart of God. Uh, yesterday, uh, really, it was so thankful in my heart when we study uh, First King chapter 17. Also, I share audio file with our brothers and sisters. First King chapter 17, from there, really, we are able to see there was song of Jeravad and song of Elisha. It was totally different. Yes, really, we can see the song of song of Jaraba widows. I have no bread, the bean of flour. I have only handful of flour and small oil, and we are going to cook and eat, and we shall die. Really, we can see in the song of Sarba widow there was no hope, there was no peace, there is no God. And really, it was a song of despair. But really, we could see that in the, on the mouth of Elijah, the song of Elijah, there was a hope, there was a future, there was a joy, because really, in his song, there was God. In the eyes of Sarva widow, only there was a bean of flour and jar of oil. Yes, really, we can see that that is the way how she used to see. And this bean of flour and jar of oil, that is where this woman focused. Amen. This where this woman focused. And whole her life, we are able to see that she has been focused on this and trust on this and relying on this. Is it right? Though this widow knew God and believed in God, but in her life, in reality, she used to trust and rely on this bean of flour and jar of oil. But there is the point where they have no food, where they all this bean of flour and jar of oil finish it. Really also her heart completely died. And she sing the sing of despair, song of despair, because there was no God in her heart, only focus and relying on this 
Is that right? But what about when she meet Elijah? In the eyes of Elijah, what about the God who created the heaven and the earth? He cannot feel this bean of flour. He cannot feel this jar of oil. The God who created the heaven and the earth, yes, he has a power to feel. That's why in the song of Elijah, there was a hope and peace and joy. Hallelujah. Really, we can see how they're different. And now I could see that the reason why God allowed us this big famine, the reason why God allowed us this challenge and problem in our life, do you know why? Yes, so that God wants to shift our heart from this being of flaw and focusing on to the Lord. Amen. Really, God wants us not relying on this situation. Really, God wants us not rely on this bean of flour and jar of oil. Really, he wants us to rely on that God who created the heaven and the earth. That God who can fear this bean of flour and jar of oil. Amen. That God who can walk in this famine. God wants us to change our focus and rely on not this situation. God wants us to rely on him, rely on God. Hallelujah. That's why really God allowed us this famine and difficult. I thank God. Oh, yes, this Zarba widow. Yes, she knew God and she believed in God. But really, we can see that in her life, she may fall into this problem, fall into her own fixed mind. But there was a servant of God who was connected with the heart of God, that God was be with the Zarba widow. And the Zarba widow able to receive the heart of servant of God. And she did exactly how he guided. And she was able to see the power of God. I thank God that our God gave us this servant of God in our life. And God gave us this church in our life. So that though it looks like God and servant of God always push us into this burden and fear. But because of this way, I believe that. God is working for us and God teaches us faith. Today, we read this. We are going to study this first King chapter 18. Now you are able to see in this beginning. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the earth. So now you are able to see that it came to pass after many days, right? It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came. And third years, because you remember in chapter 17, what happened? Chapter 17, yes, there was a famine. Why there was famine? That this is first King chapter 17, verse 1. The Elijah, the bite of the inhabitants of Gil Gilead, Gilad, say to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lies before whom I stand, there shall not be draw, shall not be due nor lane these ears except at my word. Actually, Eliza proclaim there will be no land these ears until I speak. Isn't it? So, and then now God sent the Lord of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn is some word and hide by the rock church. So that time in chapter 17, God sent God send, chapter 17, God send this Elijah, actually after God made Elijah proclaim to Israel, isn't it? To proclaim Israel that, that there is no lane until I say. Actually, why God allowed, why God allowed to do this work? Because really Israel, because of Ahab and Isabel, Instead of their serving God, really they are serving by heart. Is it right? Is it right? That's why now this chapter 
18 is beginning with this word. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Eliza. Right now, it passed three and a half year because God decided to God decide to send Lane. And then God want to him to go to Ahab. Really, here so we are able to see, really, in this time, there was a lot of challenge because. Uh, really, there was a lot of persecution because um, Aha, because of Isabel, they saw Bar. That's why there was a lot of persecution, persecution to this Israel. And then this Ahab killed many servants of God. If you see the situation, chapter 18, verse 4. So it was while Isabel scared the prophet of the Lord and that Ob Obadiah had taken 100 prophets and hidden them 50 to the cave and had to feed them with bread and waters. So you are able to see that, uh, you are able to see that at the time there was a lot of persecutions, so many prophets of the Lord they were killed. That's why this one of the servants called Ovadia, who are serving God, they have been hiding these peoples. So now when Eliza came to him and then he asked, he want to see Ahab. So you tell Ahab, I want to see him. Because the way how Ahab was thinking, all this challenge and famine is come to Israel because of Elijah. That's why they tried to kill Elijah. So there's Obedia first, he refused to Elijah to meet Ahab. How can I make you to kill? I cannot do this. But they have been arguing each other. Finally, Obadia connect uh, Ahab. And then Ahab finally meet, Ahab finally meet Elijah. Is it right? So now chapter 18, verse 17, you are able to see. Finally, Ahab beat Elisha. And what did he say? Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, is that you or trouble of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father house have in that you have forsaken the commandment of the Lord and have followed the Bahar. I think uh, Eliza explained clearly the reason why he has a challenge, isn't it? Because really one thing which you have, it was very interesting. And when, Eliza, when Ahab met Elijah, he said, is that you or trouble all Israel? So really, first, I, I surprise. And really, the reason why God sent famine in Israel is because of Ahab and Isabel and actually the father of Ahab. Is it right? The house of father of Ahab. That's why God sent Israel. Yes, also Jeroboam, he made two golden carves and make Israel to serve at high place, not in Jerusalem. But from the time continually, this king of Israel lead Israel to serve idol, not serve God. But now this Ahab, he is the one who did the most evil things in the eyes of the Lord. That's why God sent Elijah to proclaim to famine in Israel. But now really we can see that the way how Ahab said it. Are you the one who make a trouble in Israel? So really we can see that the, the people who kept by Satan, the people who are deceived by Satan, yet we are able to see that all the problem is coming from where? All this problem, all this problem challenge is coming from there because of them. Sometimes people, they do not know 
and they blame others because of you, because of past, because of someone, because of my mother, my father, because of my husband, because of my wife, because of this brother, because of these sisters. So we easily, easily blame others that we have a problem and challenge. But really one thing which we are able to see, this problem is not coming from others, not because of others, really because of my heart. God wants to connect our heart with the heart of God. Yes, really we can see the problem is not coming, the problem is coming from Ahab, but really Ahab, he doesn't know. In the same way, sometimes God allowed us challenge and problem because of our disconnections, but really we do not know ourselves. Now, this story in chapter 18, Elijah suggests Ahab, isn't it? Elijah suggests Ahab because he asked Ahab to have a, uh, you may send all the Bahar prophet, this Carmel mountain. From there, we want to see how uh, God is working, isn't it? And that is also, he wants to have a kind of battle with Eliza and his prophet uh, of Bahar. That's why they want to treat. So also Bahar want to see how it's going on. So now what Israel, what Elijah say to Israel? Verse 21. And Elijah came to all peoples and said, how long will you fetter, fetter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if far, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left the prophet of the Lord, but Baal prophet are 450 men. So really I was, I can see clearly what God, what Elijah said to Israel, how long will you fetter between two opinions? Because really we can see that Israel, they know God. Yes, they believe in God. But in reality, who is more powerful? Yet they believe in God. But when, I see, when they see Baal is more powerful, now you see that only Eliza remaining inside of the Lord, but what about Bahar? 450. And looks like Ahab is more popular than God. So now Elijah said to Israel, how long until when are you going to be between God and Bahar? Between God and this word? Also, in the same way, today in the morning, I feel that God is asking in my heart. Now, Pastor Kim, how long are you going to be between God and this world? Yes, I knew God. I believe in God. But what about in reality? Even though we believe in God, but in reality, it looks like the world is more powerful. Yeah? The people in this world is more powerful. The situation is more bigger. Is it right? That's why yet we believe in God, but always in our heart, there is doubt. Even though we believe in God, but whenever situation comes, whenever problem comes, we are doubting. So God is asking to us that until when are you going to hesitate between God and word? Yet there is a God. Yet God is there. Even the famine who allowed God allowed famine in Israel. Is it right? Even who allowed Ahab? It was not because of Ahab is popular. God allowed Ahab to do this. Is it right? But people, they don't see God. They don't see how God is working. They don't see behind of this famine, behind of this Ahab, there was a God, but only see the situation. That's why. In the heart of Israel, they are doubting, they are fearing, they are worried. So they are in that statement. Even though they know God, even though they believe in God, but they are in that statement. 
today I can see that uh, that is where we have been. Always our heart is between God and this world. Even though you pray before God, even though we, we believe in God, but really the situation is big in our heart. Before the situation, always we are in challenging, we are in problem, we are doubting. Is it right? But really God is asking us, until when are you going to be there? But now really I can see how God is working. They start battle and these bars prepare the whole day, whole day. They are calling their God, isn't it? And they kill the, far, the carb from morning, whole day they call bar, bar, bar. But there is no answer, isn't it? Now they, 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 they cut themselves, they make up blood, even though they try anything, but nothing changed. Is it right? But evening time, there is a time Eliza, and they called God. Isn't it? And but the time, what happened? Really, God was able to answer the prayer of um, prayer of this Elijah. Verse 7, 37. Verse 37. Hear me, O oh God, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God, that you have turned their heart back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond of sacrifice, the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all people saw it, they fell on their face. They say, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Amen. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So really, I was able to see clearly. Eliza, when he prayed, really God answered. And Israel, this Bible said, they saw. Isn't it? All people saw it. They fell on their face. They say the Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. Two times they confess. Can you imagine that when, when first, when Elijah asked Israel, isn't it? When Elijah asked Israel, hmm? when Elijah asked Israel, they have to decide, isn't it? They have to decide. And Elijah asked Israel, if the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow Baal. Is it right? But Israel said that the people answered him not a word. The people answered him not a word. They don't say anything, right? But now this Bible say, verse 18 says that, no, verse, um, verse 19 says that, when all people saw it, isn't it? When all people saw it, really also in the eyes of in the eyes of Eliza, in the eyes of people, they saw clearly how God is working. And then they say that, ah, really the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Now they are able to confess that God, He is God. And also what they did. They killed all bar prophets. You know why? In our heart, we are always hesitating. Yet we believe in God. Yet we call God. We pray before God. Even we be reading the Bible. Yet we believe in God. But really I can see that whenever we have a challenge and problem, always we are doubting. We are fearing. Isn't it? Why? Because really in our eyes, we cannot see that God who is working for us, isn't it? You know, 2017, when we are preparing the world camp, Makera University, really it was somehow challenging and difficult in my heart. And really I was so tired because in my eyes, the situation was big, yet I believe in God, but before the situation, my heart fell down. 
The time Pastor Park said to me, Brother Kim, Pastor Kim, when you are in night, you cannot see anything. But when, when the day comes, you are able to see. Is it right? In the same way, and don't try to see, don't try to see because you are in night. But when the day comes, you are able to see. And he prayed for me, God, you may open the eyes of Pastor Kim. In his heart, during this word camp, he may see clearly how God is working with us. Really, the people who attended this camp may see clearly how God is working so that in his heart, filled with the work of God, so that he may serve God with joy and happiness. Amen. Really, I can see that really God, how God is working during this time. Though there was a challenge and problem before, but the camp start, really, I can see clearly how God is working for us. Hallelujah. Amen. So the time, really, I can see, I was so thankful. Now, also this Israel, when they see clearly how God is working through Elijah, that is a time they say that God, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And they kill this bar prophet and they start serve God. Amen. In the same way, I can see clearly also God is working in this way. Really, before we see how God is working, always we are standing between God and the word. Yes, sometimes when we listen to the word of God, we are happy. But again, when situation comes, we fear, we feel difficult, we may feel burden in our heart. Is that right? Yes, that is the way how we used to live. But as Pastor Park said, that you, when you are in night, you cannot see, but when the day comes, you are able to see. God, you may, you may open the eyes of this Pastor Kim to see how God is working. Really the time, God opened my eyes. And really the time I was able to see clearly, ah, God is be with us. Ah, God is working with me. That is a time when I was able to stand in the sight of God. Hallelujah. And that is a time when I was able to have a face in my heart. And I was able to decide on the side of God. And from that time, really God was working for us. Today, I want to say to you that how God is working. Really, God wants to show you how God is working with you. Amen. Sometimes God allowed you challenges. God allowed you problems. From then, not only finish as a problem, not only finish as a challenge, so that God is able to show you that how God solved this problem and how God opened the way for us and how God changed this problem into the blessing. And from there, God wants to show you that God, he is working with us and living with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Really, that is the way how God is working for us and God is living for us. Amen. And then, oh, really, we are able to see that how Israel, they have a face before the Lord in the same way. Today, I want to able to see And I was able to see that, um, I was able to see that, like, uh, the reason why God sent Eliza to Israel. Really, God wants Israel to, to see clearly how God is working and to have a faith in God. Amen. In the same way, really, God has sent servant of God in our life. Why? Really, God wants to show you how God is working with you and how God is working in our church so that we are able to believe in God. We are able to have a faith in God. Really, I'm the one who used to live between believing in God and this word. When I see something is good, I feel happy. When I listen to the word of God, I feel happy. But the time I see the challenge and problem, again, we worry, fear. And we hide. Yes, that is the way how we live. But God sent servant of God towards our life. So that God wants to show us clearly how God is working. 
And after we see clearly how God is working, and then really we are able to have a faith in God. For me, I remember 2017, uh, really in my life, in my heart, also I'm the one who used to live like Israel. Even though I'm serving God as a pastor, but in the same time, I found myself serving this world and serving my flesh. And I used to believe the situation, believe my thought. That is the way how I used to live. But God sent Elijah to Israel. In the same way, God sent Pastor Park and servant of God in Uganda. And that time, also, I was able to say, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Really, also that time, I was able to see clearly how God is working with me and how God is working with us. And also I say, the Lord is God and the Lord is God. And also I was able to kill bar prophet in my heart. Don't try to kill the bar prophet in your heart. The time you see clearly how God is working and you realize that, this bar prophet who used to speak to me, they're a liar. I realized that the way how God is working before this thought gave me so many fear, worry. But that is a time when I realized that, ah, he is a liar. They're a liar. The time I realized how God is working, I saw clearly. And then I was able to realize my thought was liar. That is a time I killed my thought. I killed Baal in my heart. I was able to kill the Baal prophet in my heart and I was able to believe in God. Hallelujah. How? Not because of Israel, they have a faith. Because God sent Elijah to Israel and to show them to perform the how God is working. Then there is a time when Israel so clearly how God is working and they believe, confess that God, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. And then they are able to kill the bar prophet. And they are able to believe in God. Amen. Is it true? And then God opened the lane on Israel. I believe that that is the way how God was working in my heart. And I believe that that is the way how God will work in your life. Amen. God send the servant of God in your life. God send the church in your life. To those who, who used to always hesitate between God and the world. And God will show you clearly how God is working. And you are able to believe in God. And you are able to kill the bar prophet. We see how God's did like this. Please, verse 39. When all people saw it, they fell on their face and say, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen. And Elijah says to them, Seize the prophet of Bahar. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Hallelujah. And also, who killed? Who killed the bar? Who killed the bar? Really, we can see that um, the time they catch, and Elijah, he himself, eh? he himself is killed them there. Hallelujah! Even we cannot kill our thought by ourselves through the servant of God. We can see clearly they are able to kill this bar. Can you see the process? Believe. In God, kill this bar. And what happened? Elijah said, go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of abundant rain. Amen. I believe that this is also God said to us. Go up and eat and drink. There is a sound of abundance rain. Amen. Abundance rain. Go up, eat and drink. There is a sound of abundance lane. Really, I believe that that is the way how God has been working in my heart in Uganda. And today, God said to me, God said to me, there is a sound of abundance lane. 
I believe that there is a way how God is working in Uganda church, even in my life, even in your life. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. We finish here. Thank you.